Just pulling into the ranch here and I notice I've got a cow out here with a bunch of stuff hanging out of her, but she's not laying down and pushing, which I find to be a little bit weird. So we're gonna walk out there and get a closer look, see if we can tell what's going on. Well, I can see a calf on the ground, but it looks like it's dead. We'll get up closer and see for sure. It's not how we want to start things off. Calf's born dead, I assume. I mean, it's dead now, that's all that really matters. Uh, she's still got a lot of afterbirth hanging out of her. So I don't know, she might she might need some help delivering that. But for now, uh, it's not gonna hurt her to, to leave her for a little while. I think we'll go over to the winter pasture, check on cows over there, make sure we don't have any issues over there that need to be tended to. And then we can see if she clears this on her own or if we need to help her. Just rolling into the winter pasture over here. Hopefully we've either got no news or we've got good news over here. I'm just, you know, a, a stillborn calf just makes me sick. It's like the worst possible outcome in a way because they get so close, you know, to success and then it just doesn't happen. like everybody's here and accounted for. Unfortunately, a stillborn calf is not the most uncommon thing. It is something that does happen and what causes it is very difficult to say. The first thing that I ask myself when it happens is was there something that I did differently that could have possibly led to this and I think this year I've managed those cows at the ranch the same as I did last year and we didn't have these kind of problems last year so I don't know it you know could just be one of those things if I just have one while it's extremely disappointing and it really bums me out uh, that's that's not really great cause for concern as it would be if I got like two or more so hopefully this is not a trend for this year that would indicate there is some sort of a problem uh, hopefully it's you know just one of those things. I'm back out here in the pasture and I just can't shake the feeling that something's not right. Uh, the the afterbirth that she has hanging out of her just doesn't look normal to me. Normally if they don't clean their afterbirth right away I'll give them a day or so and usually they'll do it on their own but I don't know her afterbirth just something looks wrong to me. This calf is pretty small so I guess what I'm mostly worried about is the possibility of maybe um, that she was trying to deliver twins. This would be one of the twins and the other twin could possibly still be inside of her. She's not laying down and pushing on it or anything like that, which is kind of odd to me, but I don't know. My, my gut says I need to get her up into the chute and get a closer look at her, just feel around in there, see if I can determine what's going on and yeah i think that's what i'm gonna do start working your way up honey don't come over here I mean, you kind of have to chuckle at the irony, right? This whole time I've been putting up this temporary chute while I'm replacing it with a better one. And I've been saying, oh, I probably won't need this. I hope I won't need this. Well, wouldn't you know, first calf, we need it. Up through here, over the ramp into the chute. Up you go.
very important to get a good head catch because I'm gonna have to get behind her and in order to safely work on her I'll have to spin this tailgate up out of the way so we don't want her to be able to back up in fact I might even stick a pipe behind her just as a safety precaution that would probably be a good idea first let's see if we can get this out of here when you're pulling after birth the key is to not just yank it out of there. So what I'm doing is just applying gentle pressure and she'll start, I can see it, you probably won't see it on camera, but you can see that she is pushing on it a little bit. So we're just giving her a little bit of extra pressure just to kind of help her push it out of there. It's really a, a slow and steady process. I'm sure it doesn't feel great. Push for me. Push for me. Doing good. Keep it up. my hands are going to be cold because I just washed them. I just wanted to feel around and make sure there wasn't another calf in there, which there was not. Well, I don't feel anything else in there and I'm fairly confident that I got all of her afterbirth removed, so no reason to keep her up here in the chute. Let's get her back out, back in the pasture, and hopefully she can start having a little bit better day. We'll be keeping an eye on number 51 over the next couple of days just to make sure that she's not acting like she's feeling sick or anything like that. I think she's going to be fine, but still, it's not a bad idea to just keep an eye on her. Well, I'll tell you, that is certainly not how I want to start calving season. I, I mean, every year we have some bad luck, and hopefully this year we're just getting that bad luck out of the way right out of the gate. Thank you, mommy. How do we do? Look at that. You know who the daddy of that one is. Another day, another new calf. It's that time of year. I can see it sleeping over there kind of along the fence and I could see from the road that the mother is number 20. If you've been with the channel for any length of time, you know that number 20 is not my biggest fan. So getting up on that calf and getting a near tag in it might be a little bit tricky. I didn't tag the other calf at the winter pasture, one, because I didn't have any tagging equipment when I first found him, and two, he's so uniquely colored that I'm probably gonna be able to remember which one he is and which cow he came out of but number 20's calf is all black. It'll be really tough to distinguish it later on. So I've got a very simple tagging system here. I've just got mother's number, kind of smaller on the top, and then number two indicating that it was the second calf born. What I'm going to do is walk around here and go up the fence line so that I put myself between the calf and the fence because a lot of times what happens with newborn calves is you startle them and they just get up and start running. So we hope that he, if that happens, will run away from me and therefore not through the fence and out into the road.
Okay, that's it. Well, that went about as smooth as you could hope for. Mother didn't even come over and see what I was doing. Calf, shoot, I don't think she even hardly knew what happened. All right. <laughs> I would love to say they're all gonna go that way, but I know that won't be the case. Well, they're back together now. So I'm, I'm glad they waited for me to leave to do that. Number 20, for all the bad I talk about her, is actually a pretty good cow and a really good mother. So that's why we keep her around. She just, even when I'm out in the field, she's not bad. It's just when you try to work them, she does not like to be worked. So, you know, in all other aspects, she's a pretty good cow. And while we're out here, I figured I'd show you guys number 51. This is the cow that had the stillborn calf. It's probably been about a week ago now. And she's got a, a big old bag but other than that she's looking all right she seems to be doing pretty good and i base this off of three things really one is she ambulatory which she is she's moving around she stays with the other cows a lot of times cattle will indicate to you that they are sick or don't feel well by kind of like isolating themselves away from the herd second thing is is she eating yes you just saw her she's eating uh, there's been no loss of appetite or anything in that regard and then is she drinking when animals aren't feeling good then a lot of times they'll go off of feed or off of drink and um, she hasn't been doing any of those things so hopefully she's going to be all right she might be one that makes the coal list um, just because of the fact that she did have a stillborn calf and I did have to deliver her after birth. We'll kind of see what things look like towards the end of calving season. It's a little bit later, same day, and it looks like number 54 had herself a calf and I'm gonna say Rivet is the daddy of this one as well. I was gonna hang around and try to get a shot of it nursing, but I can tell on that front quarter that it has eaten a little bit. And you can just tell by the way the calf is acting. It's sort of inquisitive and walking around, sniffing things. It's not acting in any way stressed or hungry. So really the best thing I can do now is just leave them alone. Well, we finally have an answer to the question of whether or not Rivet's calves would come out looking like him. The reason that there was a little bit of uncertainty around this issue is because Rivet is half Black Angus and most of my cows are half Black Angus as well. And black is a dominant color in cattle. So uh, for, for these calves to come out gray like this one is, is uh, genetically it's a little bit lower probability or so I think. I talked a little bit with Jeremy, the breeder that I bought Rivet, our bull from. I'm fairly certain that the genetic makeup of the mother is at least half Hereford and then probably almost half Black Angus. She might have a little bit more Hereford in it. I'm not actually sure what she is, but going off of that and knowing what Rivet is, that would mean that the calf is about a quarter Hereford, half Angus, three sixteenths Simmental and one sixteenth Charlet. So quite the mashup of a bunch of different breeds. Um, and it'll be really interesting to see how this little guy performs. Hybrid vigor or heterosis refers to the amount of genetic diversity that an animal has. And simply put, the more genetic diversity that they do have typically means the more uh, hardy the animal is, the more resilient they are. They just seem to have less issues. The way that it was explained to me once, and I think this is a really good comparison, 
is to talk about dogs. If you take, you know, a really expensive high dollar purebred dog, they have a ton of health issues. And then you've got some mutt off the streets that's you know, 10 different breeds put together, that thing can live on table scraps for 15 years. So the balancing act with commercial cattle is to get the maximum amount of heterosis that you can while still keeping those genetic traits that you want from individual breeds. In other words, I don't want to get too far away from certain breeds because once I do that, then I can no longer predict what my animals are going to be. If I kind of stay within the boundaries of, you know, three or four different breeds, then they'll be pretty predictable as far as what they're going to become. If, you know, you start breeding to everything under the sun, you might not know what you're going to get. So there, there is a balancing act here, but I think with the breeds that we are using or the breeds that these calves are made up of, we're, we're doing pretty good. So in total, we've got three calves on the ground. There's a bunch of these cows that are looking like they're getting really close to calving. Their udders are swelling up, bellies are big. I expect the action to start picking up out here any day. In fact, by the time you're seeing this, I wouldn't be surprised if we've got more than the three that we've got right now. Here's hoping everything goes well this year. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.